Hey guys, it's David from Automotive Press. As you know, we have one of the most exciting news this year because Mazda is introducing a 2026 version of the beloved CX-5. In case you didn't know, they've sold more than 4.5 million units of the CX-5 over the years globally. So this is perhaps one of the most important car for Mazda, which by the way, is pronounced Mazda here in Canada, Mazda in the US, and in Japan we pronounce Mazda. But whatever the pronunciation might be, we really love the CX-5 because it represents something that is lacking in today's compact SUV market. What do I mean by that? Well, most compact SUVs such as Toyota RAV4, Honda CR-V, Nissan Rogue, I mean, all of them are really well represented in the market and they provide good value, especially RAV4, but they're all honestly kind of boring to drive. Despite their attempt to make the vehicles a little bit better in terms of drivability, at the end of the day, they're still comfortable, somewhat upscale vehicle with lots of room, but without much of a driving character, especially the RAV4 and the Nissan Rogue. Both of them are kind of boring to drive. I would say Honda CR-V is a little bit better, but none of them compares to the CX-5, which has shockingly good steering effort. You guys all know that uh, the automotive industry has moved from hydraulic power steering to electric power steering many decades ago, and in that process, we lost the instant feedback and the steering effort that we used to get with the hydraulic power steering because with that you have really good feel to it but somehow only two brands have managed to keep a good steering effort and a good feel from their electric power steering system and that is Porsche on one hand and Mazda on the other spectrum because this is an affordable vehicle and the steering almost feels like hydraulic power steering lots of feedback it feels pretty heavy good feel from the roll to the hand it's actually amazingly well designed which is represented in all of Mazda's product but especially the CX-5 this is the sportiest of all the SUVs that Mazda have and I'm looking forward to the 2026 CX-5 because I think they're going to make it even better so in this video let me go through all the changes that Mazda has explained in their recent release but also I'm going to predict some stuff that Mazda hasn't talked about such as the drivability and the feel on the road and some quality. Those are things that Mazda hasn't talked about, but I'm going to predict all of that in this video. So let me tell you all about the 2026 Mazda CX-5. Let's go. All right, welcome back. So let me first talk about quality because that's something that no one is talking about in terms of what's gonna happen between 2025 CX-5 and 2026 CX-5. I expect the quality to get a little bit better because they really ramped up the level of quality of manufacturing for CX-70 and CX-19. I told you guys before that the panel fit and alignment is perhaps one of the best in the world, even if you compare it to cars costing five or six times as much. And there's no question that's gonna happen with the new CX-5 because this one is already pretty impressive because it's three millimeter there, 3.1 millimeter there with a perfect alignment despite the curvature here and even better here at 2.9 millimeter three millimeter there and this is also three millimeters so perfect alignment paint quality is amazing even though this car wasn't designed like the CX-70 and 90 to have that kind of waving curve and reflection of the light but actually I can still see the zebra effect a little bit here and here and that is something that only Mazda has been able to do because of the reflection of the light, because of the quality of the stamping, and also of the paint job itself. They're able to create this kind of reflection of the light that is just absolutely gorgeous. The paint job looks like something that came out of a $500,000 car. In fact, I'm going to say the paint job is better than some Bentleys I've seen on the road. So paint looks excellent. I expect the 2026 to be even more narrow here so this is three kind of three millimeter 3.1 it might be down to about 2.9 these are also already very good i don't know how you can improve that but i expect the new one will be even better kind of closer to cx70 and cx90 series which have basically three millimeters all the way across sometime 2.9 and that's probably where it's headed i think it's already so amazingly good that i can't imagine master improving quality even more than this what i do hope to see is that this beautiful paint job uh, which is in red color will also be available in other colors for 2026 because this is a special paint that has additional clear coat and flakes the flakes are smaller than usual in normal metallic paint and that's why the reflection of light is so beautiful in this particular paint job so i think if Mazda can actually maintain the quality of this 2025 cx5 and carry it on to 2026 it's already world class 
but I suspect that you'll get a little bit better. Now back to the design changes. They made the vehicle 4.5 inches longer and the wheelbase, which is between front and the rear wheels, are also three inches longer, a half an inch wider. So it's not that much wider, but quite a bit longer. So it's going to be a bigger vehicle. I mean, 4.5 inches will basically reclassify the CX-5 to the next class in terms of size. So it's going to be almost a reclassification in some sort because it's so much bigger. But the front is actually still looking very similar. People love this design, so they're kind of keeping it safe. But there's a more of a tiered look in the headlight much like a CX-70 and CX-90 series, and the grille design has been changed a little bit. Otherwise, still looking a lot like CX-5, but closer to CX-70 and CX-90 design. At the back, there's a little bit more of a design change. This looks simple and actually not too bad, but the new model has a bit of a cascading look to it with a thinner bezel coming this way. So the back end definitely looks better, and thankfully they kept the signature um, C-pillar look here, which is kind of this triangular shape. They kept that for the new CX-5 because this is obviously one of the things that makes CX-5 look like a CX-5. But I'm really glad the new model is much bigger because right now the interior spacing, especially the rear seat, isn't all that great. Uh, but the bigger one with 4.5 inches longer will give you much more rear legroom will also give you better cargo space. I think the lift height has also been lowered for a new model. And they're saying that um, the rear area in terms of spacing is some of the roomiest and the biggest in its class. So we'll have to obviously wait and see the model come out and actually sit in the back and so forth. But it's promising that the vehicle is bigger. Now let's hop inside and let's take a look at the interior and see what's changing for 2026 because the interior is definitely going to be very controversial. All right, so I'm inside the 2025 Mazda CX-5, and this is where the new model will make a huge difference because right now, this is definitely outdated. We have a small screen here with Mazda's famous rotary dial on my hand here, which works fine, but because it's not a proper touch panel, it's very awkward to use, and just generally speaking, it looks really outdated. This looks like a car that came out 10 years ago, which is really the case with this model. So new one looks substantially better with a substantial change. And that is the fact that they removed all buttons and switches except for what's on the steering wheel. So we will have a big screen here, 12.9 inches to start off, but 15.6 inches for the higher end models. And it will have a huge screen right in the front here, but there are no buttons. And that includes nothing for uh, radio, for audio, for HVAC, for temperature control. Everything is going to be on the screen. Kind of following through with all the trends that are set by electric cars, especially Tesla. And even though we will have some switches on the steering wheel, I have to say that that's the biggest disappointment. I think Mazda was one of the first models to say that they really like physical attributes in terms of button switches and being able to feel it with the hand. And for them to remove that, I don't understand. None of us really understand. We're not getting a clear answer from Mazda in terms of why that's the case other than that's obviously the trend uh, that everybody is seeing in the auto industry. And hopefully because the screen is so big that despite not having buttons, it's still easy to control and manage and move things around. But without buttons, I just don't really see how it could be user friendly. And I'm worried that it might affect the basic ergonomics, but we'll have to wait and see. When the new model is physically out and we're able to drive it, I'll make the judgment call. Uh, and then we'll know whether or not the new system is going to still work for general consumers. I will say that regardless of the design changes, I'm sure the quality will be first class. As you can already see, because we have soft material all over the place, uh, you can see the soft material here. Unlike Toyota that has really moved to hard plastic and really cheap looking plastic in some of their models, Mazda has kept this kind of high end look all the way through. And regardless of what I try to do, like a punch test, I can never replicate the squeaks or rattle is solid as a rock and I expect the new models to be just as solid. It's built in the same factory in Hiroshima in Japan. I've been to that factory numerous times and have every confidence that the new model will be built like a rock, built solid and it's going to be one of the best quality vehicles in the world. And on top of that, the design changes will obviously include upgraded safety features, technology features, so you can expect all of the latest features in terms of uh, safety as well as substantially improved and updated ADAS, which stands for Advanced Driver Assistance System. So all of that will be included in a new model. There's no question that's going to be a, a better car in terms of features and technology. But what about the most important part of CX-5, 
which is a driving experience and driving feel, because I said that is what distinguishes ZX-5 from any other compact SUV. So let's take the 2025 out for a drive and let me predict what the 2026 will feel like. So I've hopped into the 2025 Mazda CX-5 now to drive. And of course, this is the biggest difference between Mazda and all other brands because the CX-5 is really the only SUV that has a proper feedback in terms of steering. As I mentioned earlier, even though it is electric power steering, the sensation and the feel is like that of a hydraulic power steering. It's way better than what you'll find in a RAV4, CRV, Nissan Rogue, you name it. None of those cars have a proper feel. The only one that has a really good steering feel that's close to this vehicle in terms of size is a Porsche Macan. In fact, I would say the CX-5 kind of feels like a Porsche Macan in terms of the basic driving character and the steering feel. And I should know that because we do own a 2018 Porsche Macan and we've owned many Porsche Macan for that matter. And driving this back to back with a Macan might surprise you because you might wonder how is it possible for Mazda to have a, a model that feels like a Porsche, but it really does, at least in terms of steering characteristic, not so much the powertrain. So I think the new one will be even sharper. They're saying that's going to feel even more accurate, even more precise. And judging from my experience with the CX-70 and CX-90, I can only imagine that the characteristic of the steering will just get better and better. So I'm really looking forward to driving the new model. But what about the powertrain, that is the engine and transmission? Well, the new model will have a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated engine with a six speed uh, automatic transmission and gone is the turbocharged engine. So that's maybe uh, another controversial topic, at least for me, because I love the Mazda's turbocharged engines. They're really peppy, they're really powerful. They're really, really uh, well suited to the characteristic of the Mazda models. But the new model will not have a turbo engine. In its place, Mazda will introduce its own hybrid engine, a brand new hybrid technology for 2027 model year. So that'll be one year after the a new model debuted with naturally aspirated four cylinder engine. So we will first have a 2.5 liter with six speed automatic, no turbo, no hybrid. And then a year later, we will have hybrid engine system from Mazda, not from Toyota. And we don't know much about the spec yet. They haven't told us yet, so we'll find out very soon. It could very well be designed in collaboration with Toyota. That's something that's possible, but they are saying that it's Mazda's own design. So despite the not having the turbocharged engine anymore for 2026, the 2.5 liter engine will still have 187 horsepower. It's being recalibrated to provide better torque and better acceleration at lower RPM. And it's also more efficient. So I'm going to assume that it's going to feel similar to what I'm driving right now. And even though it might not be the fastest vehicle in this market, I think it'll be more than sufficient. So I'm really hoping that the revised engine will be uh, well matched to the characteristic of the vehicle. We'll find out soon uh, once we get to drive the car in a few months or so. Now in terms of the ride quality, right now the CX-5 is pretty firm. It's very sporty for that matter. Another reason why it kind of feels like a Porsche Macan. But the new model, because it's four inches longer, with a wheelbase three inches longer than this one, it's going to be definitely better in terms of ride. It'll be more stable, it'll feel a little bit smoother, not as bumpy and not as firm, because I suspect that the new model will move upscale and become more like a CX-70 and CX-90. So the ride should improve, because I think right now this ride is pretty firm, and I like it this way, but not everyone will like it. And I expect the new model to feel a little bit more luxurious, and a little bit more comfortable due to longer wheelbase and better suspension and better calibration. So again, we'll find that out once we get to drive the vehicle in due course, which is only a few months away. And in combination with everything else, I suspect the 2026 CX-5 to be one of the most desirable vehicles in the industry because it will have a better performance, much more technology. It's going to be bigger, roomier, more comfortable, more refined. So basically you take everything you love about the CX-5 right now and improve it by a notch or two. Well, that's what's gonna happen with the 2026 CX-5. So it's going to be, I think, one of the best vehicles to buy. And if I'm looking to buy a compact SUV, that would be the car I will buy because I find everything else in the market to be just too boring to drive. And this is the only one that comes anywhere close to the feeling I have on my 2018 Porsche Macan, uh, which provides solid feel, good steering, good ride, 
but also just a kind of front to drive characteristic that's missing in many vehicles. So I hope you enjoyed my video about some predictions for 2026 six five in terms of driving. You don't have to wait too long to find out exactly how the new model will feel like because that should happen in the next few months or so. But in the meantime, let me know if you have any questions about the 2026 and whether or not you're looking forward to 2026 Mazda CX-5 because I'm super excited because I love this model and I know I'm going to like the new one even more. If you enjoyed my video, please give me a thumbs up, make some comments. And if you haven't done so yet, would you kindly subscribe as that would be very helpful for me. Until next video, I'm signing off for now. Thank you so much.